Today, we look at the great German economist Johann von Thunen. Johann von Thunen was born in 1783 and he died in 1850. He was primarily a German farmer. He was not an academic and never held an academic position and didn't travel in those circles. Nevertheless, he had a brilliant mind, both for theory and unusually also for facts. This made him a very important German agronomist. So he would methodically collect data, for example, on crop rotation and would calculate when crops should be rotated, which crops should be rotated when, and so forth. And people flocked from all over Germany to his farm to learn about the latest scientific advances, which would allow them to increase productivity on their farms. He was also an amazing economist, though he was not very influential in his time. He wrote in German, and he was not a very good writer even in German, and this limited his influence. Nevertheless, looking back today, we can see that he made remarkable advances in economic theory. So just to give you a few quotes, Paul Samuelson said, among geographers and location theorists, Thunen is a founding god. Schumpeter said, Thunen is one of the patron saints of econometrics. And the historian Ferdinand Braudel said, he ranks alongside Marx as the greatest German economist of the 19th century. He made remarkable contributions to marginal productivity theory, considerably before Clark, to capital theory, and also to location theory. I'm going to focus on location theory in this lecture. Von Thunen starts out his three-volume magnum opus, The Isolated State, with this fascinating statement. He says, imagine a very large town at the center of a fertile plain, which is crossed by no navigable river or canal. Throughout the plain, the soil is capable of cultivation and of the same fertility. Far from the town, the plain turns into an uncultivated wilderness, which cuts off all communication between this state and the outside world. There are no other towns on the plain. The central town must therefore supply the rural areas with all manufactured products, and in return, it will obtain all its provisions from the surrounding countryside. So look how modern this is. He's setting up a model. He says, here's this town. It's in the center of this plain, which is uniform everywhere. There's no other interfering rivers. There's no other towns we want to talk about. There's no communication with the outside world. He set up, just as the moderns would, a very simple, austere structure. And then what does he say? He says, the problem we want to solve is this. What pattern of cultivation will take shape in these conditions? And how will the farming system of different districts be affected by their distance from the town? We assume throughout that farming is conducted absolutely rationally. So he's going to take his model and he's going to apply the self-interest assumption, the assumption of that uh, workers and farmers will maximize profits, landowners will maximize profits, and then he's going to ask, what does this imply about the pattern of cultivation? Very beautiful, very clear statement of a model and the assumptions behind the model. Let's take a look at how the model works. Okay, here we have our isolated town in the middle of this uniformly fertile plain. Now let's add a z-axis here, which we're simply going to use to mark down the price of different products in town. So in the middle of the town, there's a market, and in this market, there's a price, for example, for milk. So the price of milk we may uh, indicate by the white dot right here. Now von Thunen then asks, how much will dairy farmers be willing to pay for different pieces of land? And he says it's going to depend upon three things. First, the price of milk in town. Second, the cost of transporting the milk from the outer lying regions into the center of town. And third, the productivity of land in producing milk. So how much land do you need per cow per gallon of milk? With these three factors, he can, he can determine the milk bid rent curve. This is the maximum amount which dairy farmers are willing to pay for different plots of land. And of course, because of transportation costs, the land in the farther away dairy farmers will be less willing to pay for that land. The farther away the land is from the center of town, the less the dairy farmers will be willing to pay. 
Now for different products, there are different bid rent curves. So here's the bid rent curve for grain. Notice that because grain may have a different transportation cost than milk, and because the productivity of land may be different than that of grain, the bid rent curve looks different. And finally, here is, let's say, the bid rent curve for livestock. Now, von Thunen then says, suppose we've got lots and lots of farmers, and they're all bidding for land. They're all trying to maximize their profit, as are the landowners. Who will allocate, who will get which pieces of land? Well, it's pretty clear that where the milk bid rent curve is above the grain and livestock bid rent curve, this is the area where the dairy farmers will be able to outbid the grain producers and the livestock producers. So in this circle around town, that's where we'll find the dairy farmers. Similarly, on this portion of the curve, the grain farmers are able to outbid the dairy farmers and the livestock farmers. So in this second ring, that's where the grain farmers will uh, be located. Finally, in the outer ring, the livestock farmers are able to outbid the grain farmers and the dairy farmers. And in the very outermost areas, the land will be uncultivated because no one will be willing to pay rent for that land. It's simply too far away from the city. Now this is an incredible, beautiful theoretical model, but von Thunen actually went further. He estimated the parameters of the model. He went and methodically co collected from his own farms and from other farms information on transportation costs and the productivity of land for different types of products, and he brought the data to the model. He brought the model to the data. This is why Schumpeter calls him a patron saint of econometrics, or today we may say perhaps a little bit more accurately that von Thunen was a patron saint of calibration, of calibrating a model based upon data. Remarkable. Von Thunen's first model abstracted away from complicating factors, but he showed how what would happen when you reintroduce those complicating factors. This is actually, I'm showing you now, a piece of software based upon von Thunen's ideas. And the black lines here are uh, transportation routes. In particular, these are railroads. The blue one is a canal. As before, we have our central city with the red dot right here. And this gray area is land which could not be cultivated. In fact, this is a lake. Uh, in fact, you might sort of recognize this as uh, Chicago. Well, taking uh, assumptions about the market price of different products, about the transportation costs, and so forth, and inputting it into a von Thunen model, what you can then produce is a picture of land use with uh, grain in yellow and livestock in red, uh, green, the woodlands on the very edges, and uh, the white areas, again, being close to places where it's cheap to transport, close to railways and close to uh, canals. You can then flip this picture around and look at, well, what are the implications for rents? And here's a 3D surface map of the rents, seeing where the uh, surface is higher. Those are higher rents. What's amazing about the von Thunen model is it has actually been applied to many different places in the world. And it, reasonably, it works reasonably well, especially for agricultural areas, as you might imagine. Input into, into the model, reasonable uh, figures for transportation costs and prices and agricultural productivity, and put in some uh, assumptions about land which is uncultivated and so forth, and you actually get reasonable results out of the model. An incredible achievement for a 19th century German agronomist. Here are some further uh, references. Fujita shows that von Thunen not only preceded location theory, but that he also has extensive discussions of agglomeration, of cities, of economies of scale, and so forth. Many of the ideas which would later come up again in new economic geography, uh, which Paul Krugman, among any others, has contributed to. Uh, Paul Samuelson's paper, Thunen at 200, uh, creates a, a fully worked out mathematical version of the model. The uh, Thunen software I showed you can be found at J. Michael Batty's page, A Science of Cities. And for more on von Thunen's other contributions to marginal productivity theory, to capital theory, you can take a look at Jörg Nihans' book, A History of Economic Theory, 
That's my favorite history of economic theory book. Uh, you can also find his discussion of von Thunen in the New Palgrave. Thanks.